In this video, we're going to have a look at the Duct Preferences page. We can get to the Duct Preferences page by going to the Show menu, the right D or right Draw Tools, Duct Preferences, or clicking on the Duct button on the navigator bar and going to the Preferences page, or clicking on your right D or right Duct Tools here and clicking on the set of gears here. Now, once on the Duct Preferences page, the most important and useful thing to note is that this entire page can be saved as a library so that one can flip from one group of settings to another very quickly and very easily by simply creating a library option and then selecting that library option here at the top of the page. And when setting up the Duck Preferences page, I strongly recommend that rather than uh, going through the entire page here, one invests the same amount of effort and create a library of these settings here. So I click on the button with three dots next to the Duck Preferences library here at the top of the page, and I click the Next button. Now, given that this is a library that can be set up in advance, it's possible that during the project wizard process, you've already selected the appropriate duck preference library. Uh, assuming that you haven't set up a preferences library yet, so I can create a new library and click the next button at the bottom of the page. Now here we can choose the layout of the duck system. Uh, we're going to draw our own duck system here rather than have the program uh, draw one for us. Uh, a radial system would be uh, every duck connected with a home run off of the air handler. Um, the one level trunk systems have a trunk line on the floor with your air handler and everything else runs up a riser at the end of the branch runs. Uh, the plenum systems have uh, a main riser off the top of the air handler and it's a separate trunk on each floor. Uh, X-axis systems the trunk goes left to right, Y-axis systems the trunk goes up and down. So again we're going to use user defined as our default. Uh, the max supply branch heating and supply branch cooling determines uh, how many uh, registers a room gets by default. Uh, you can add and delete registers very easily on the drawing screen, so uh, I'm not going to tinker with that setting either. Uh, the duct size, uh, we recommend using standard English sizes for most designs. This will eliminate odd sizes after 10 inch. We'll also eliminate odd sizes in rectangular duct. Uh, automatic trunk reduction, up to you. Uh, the program will reduce your trunk line uh, when the velocity in the trunk drops by 50% if you check that option. Uh, use variable friction rate. We'll calculate a uh, different friction rate for every individual run of the duct and size each component for its worst case friction rate. Uh, so that a branch run with lower restriction would use a smaller duct um, and a branch run um, having to deal with higher restriction would need a larger duct. Um, and you would get those sizes uh, yielding a better balanced system as a result. Uh, a bypass duct um, can be calculated on the duct preferences page. Uh, Bi-level zoning is a specific type of zoning uh, to accommodate hot air rise. Uh, checking that box, the uh, cooling CFM will be increased by 20% on the second floor, um, or the top floor, I should say, and the heating CFM increased by 20% on the bottom floor. All right, I'm going to leave that unchecked for now. Down here we have a breakdown of the actual ducts, both supply and return, branch and trunk. I can choose the material of the duct system. This of course is going to be the actual interior material. If you have a sheet metal duct but it's lined, you would be selecting duct liner and not sheet metal. And uh, note, any sizes that we calculate would be ID or interior diameter, uh, not OD. Um, so I'm going to select a uh, sheet metal duct system for now, although our design examples will continue, we'll, we'll use both. Um, the duct height, if you have a rectangular duct, set a height. If you have a round duct, like I'm going to use a round branch, uh, you leave the height at zero and we'll calculate a round branch. Even if this says rectangular here, you're still going to get a round size because the duct height is set for zero. Okay. When you set a height, we will calculate a rectangular size. And rectangular sizes, as you probably already know, uh, can be for rectangular or oval. Eight by whatever the size would be could be a rectangular size or oval size. That's where the selection comes in. And I'm going to have rectangular trunks, not oval trunks, so I'm going to leave that there. Um, by the way, a branch is any duct that ends at a register. A trunk is any duct that ends at another duct. Uh, the maximum velocity is going to be maximum allowable velocity. Um, this, of course, being a noise control issue um, for both supply and return. The minimum velocity is uh, something of a tricky number. Minimum velocity is a number that will be used in an undesirable situation. Um, should your friction rate be so low that your duct design is using larger ducts than you would like, and there's nothing that to be, can be done uh, to adjust your friction rate. 
uh, RideSoft will ignore the pressure concerns of your duck size and resize the ductwork for this velocity to avoid depressurizing your duct system. Uh, of course, the, what that means is, is you are actually reducing the airflow or inc increasing the restriction on the system uh, past where it's uh, recommended you design it for. Um, but it's, this is about making the best of a bad situation. Uh, 200 is a pretty common practice. Some people eliminate this by setting it to zero. Um, um, minimum diameter, that's the smallest duct I would use. In the case of a rectangular duct, uh, minimum diameter actually means minimum width. So if I wouldn't reduce past an 8x8, eight eight, then I can set my minimum, in this case, width to 8. Um, the round duct sizes library and rectangular duct sizes library is going to get its own video, so refer to that video if you want to use one of those options. You can select that uh, option. Um, insulation, this is for our materials list tool. Um, if you uh, want to have a certain material duct show up on the, on the, on the um, bill of materials, you can choose low, medium, or high insulation duct. Uh, the actual R value of those is entirely up to, to you, as it, it, this is only for our materials list tool. It is not for the duct load. That has already been calculated. Um, register shape and size. You can determine default register sizes here on this page and the default register sizes are what's going to show up on the drawing screen. Now these are not calculated grill sizes. We do not know the free grill area, face velocity, Q rating, or other factors about your grills and therefore cannot size the grills for you. And so this will set a default size throughout the drawing then allowing you to adjust whatever uh, registers might need to be adjusted. Um, I like to put in uh, a size like this one, 12 by 12, as it makes for larger grills that are easier to click and drag and drop, um, and I'll be able to e more easily tell which grills I've sized myself and which ones I haven't, because I don't typically use 12 by 12 grills. Um, and on the return side, I use the same, a similar tactic, um, 24 by 12, nice large targets, um, but a, a pretty non-standard size for uh, my return grills. Um, so it's easier to tell which ones I've sized myself or not. Uh, not to mention, these are two different sizes, making supply and return even easier to tell apart. Of course, we already use industry standards slash and, and X uh, notation for return and supply, but this makes it easier to tell them apart. Uh, the register type and material is still for the materials list tool, not for the design itself. We're not sizing the registers. We will, however, pull particular registers and put them on the bill of materials. And, of course, this is something that can be set on a grill-by-grill -grill basis, but there's a, a default setting here that I could use uh, ahead of time. Um, if I click on the next button at the bottom of the page, this is where I can go through and set up my default fittings. Now, this can be a time-consuming process, as there are several pages of several different kinds of fittings that you can select from. But uh, the important thing to keep in mind is, number one, if you set this up in advance, you don't need to um, uh, go through this process every single time. This will be saved as a library and therefore available from one project to the next. Um, and number two, you needn't worry about the fittings that don't apply to this particular system. In other words, this is a sheet metal, uh, you know, trunk and branch system. I don't have to pick flex junctions. I'm not even planning to use flex duct in the system. Um, what you're going to go, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to go through each of these pages of fittings, and for any type of fitting that might apply, like supply boot, would, uh, supply boot would obviously apply to any um, uh, of my uh, systems. I could click that button there, the button with three dots and go through the list of fittings, looking at these pictures, trying to determine what type of fitting uh, best describes my most common boot. Now, if I use two different boots, I'm going to describe this as the most common, and any one that's different, I'll make a change to after I've drawn the duct system. Um, now, the primary concern here is you're looking for the picture of the fitting that you use. Now, there may be some sub-options after that. We'll see a couple examples of that in a second. Um, if you cannot find a picture of the boot that you use or whatever type of fitting it is you use, um, we recommend that you uh, find something of a similar equi equivalent length. Um, look at the manufacturer's materials for whoever it is you buy that particular fitting from. They may have a rated equivalent length for that fitting that you can use. If the picture doesn't match but the equivalent length does, that's ultimately all that matters. Um, so I'm going to click OK. That'll be my supply boot. I could do the same for return boot. Um, and so on and so on for each of these types of fittings. Now some fittings are going to have one picture with multiple options. For example, elbows can be actually one of the trickier of the bunch because within the elbow selection, while I may have a radius bend elbow, the 
the measurement of the radius of that elbow, whether it's a sweeping radius or a very tight radius, is going to change the rating of this, uh, of this radius elbow. And so finding the one that has the right radius to width ratio is going to be up to me. Even though there's one picture, the additional information uh, is something that Wrightsoft cannot measure and therefore something I need to select. However, uh, for the case of a lot of these um, uh, fittings, like the takeoffs, when there's only one picture of a fitting and multiple options here, um, often it's the case that this is, uh, these are options that Wrightsoft can measure for you. For example, how many distribution branches downstream is a takeoff is something that Wrightsoft can very easily know um, and can select. Uh, so is the, um, the difference in CFM from uh, the, the trunk to the branch component or whatever it is the, um, uh, the measurement is, we can measure that and determine which of these you want. So all you have to do is pick from the picture saying, this is the fitting that I'm going to use, okay, and we will um, automatically uh, determine that for you. Um, on occasion, you may see more than one fitting in the same picture, such as this fan fitting here, right? There's a 1A and a 1B. There is also a case where you're going to want to make sure that you select the appropriate one. Um, and if it's not clear which is which, you can read the description here and see that one is tapered, one is not, one is with a transition, one is not. Um, and so you're going to go through each of these fitting preferences here, determining what the most common fittings are. And this is a very, very important process, by the way. If I'm using a full-size plenum and tapping off the side of it with this rectangular duct that's smaller than my plenum, it's a 35-foot equivalent length. Even without a transition, it's only 35 feet. Whereas if I just tap into the bottom of my trunk, it's 120 feet of equivalent length. That's saying that going through here is the equivalent of running 120 feet in a straight line versus 35 feet. And so. Going through and make sure you pick the right fittings is a very important part of the process. It's something that we can also fine-tune in the drawing screen, but this will certainly make that process a lot easier by picking the stuff out ahead of time. And when I click Finish, I can save my changes. And when I'm done with that, next time I go to do a design using these settings, I just simply select it from the list, and I'm ready to go. So setting these up as a library is probably the most a useful thing you can do with your duck preferences, but it is a very important part of the duck design. The one other very interesting and very useful thing about the duck preferences page is that if you change these settings after the fact, anything uh, in your duck design that you have not manually changed will automatically update with your new settings. And so if you pick out a new takeoff, for example, any takeoffs in your design that you haven't right-clicked and manually adjusted will automatically use the new takeoff that you've selected on your duck preferences page. This concludes our video. Thank you for your time and have a good day.